Hi, I'm Stephanie Poole, founder and CEO of Birth Prep Academy. I'm on a mission to help pregnant moms prepare for their first hospital birth. I'm sharing revealing conversations about what it really takes to successfully transition into motherhood. So join me here to discover things like what to expect in childbirth, how to prepare for your birth. We'll also talk about breastfeeding and so much more. I'm so grateful to share it all with you right here on Oh Baby, the podcast created for pregnant moms preparing for their first hospital birth. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Stephanie Poole. I am the founder of Birth Prep Academy, where we help pregnant women prepare for their first hospital birth. If you are new here, now you know who I am. And if you have already been with me for a few episodes, then welcome back. I'm always so grateful whenever you tune into an episode. So with that being said, we have a really good episode today. And it's one of those episodes that is what needs to be said, but you're always kind of towing the line on how to say it maybe or how to really communicate it. Today, we're going to be talking about boundaries and really how to stand in your power as a new mom. That is kind of a tricky navigation, right? With family, with friends, with strangers. And so we're going to talk about that today after you have the baby, especially in that immediate postpartum when you're home or when you're out with your baby, you might get certain questions or certain interactions with people. And it's always handy to know how to deal with those things But you don't really hear people talk about how to deal with those things. Well, that's what we're going to do here today. Before we jump into today's episode, I just want to remind you that I have a PDF for you to download. It is how to pack your hospital bag in 60 minutes. So if you're pregnant, if you are looking to prepare for your first birth and you don't know where to get started, mm -hmm, I got you. This is for you. Maybe you've been procrastinating. It's something you know you need to do, but you've been putting it off. We're going to end there today. You're going to check that off your to-do list like now. Go to birthprepacademy.com forward slash hospital bag. Again, that's birthprepacademy.com forward slash hospital bag. Uh, yeah, check it out. Now on to the episode. So today, we're going to be talking about boundaries and how to really stand in your power as a new mom. Now, the concept for this episode came about when I started thinking about what new moms are often faced with when they are home and a new mom with a new baby, especially when it comes to friends and family, even strangers. How do you handle certain situations And that's why I felt like today's episode was important because it helps us to just know how to place healthy boundaries in place, things that you are comfortable with or that you don't feel comfortable with to be very vocalized and put in place so that you can be in comfort in your home with your baby or even if you do encounter certain situations outside of the home. So specifically, You might get people asking about whether or not you're breastfeeding or if you're sleep training or are you going back to work? And if so, how is that? How are you going to take care of the baby or how are you going to handle being away from the home? There are a lot of judgments when it comes to women and being moms and how they are parenting, right? And as you continue to be a mom, you just learn how to be you and to stay in your lane and most of it just washes off. But in that immediate postpartum, there's a few things that happens in terms of hormones and just how sensitive you may be at the time, especially because you're new, so you're still trying to figure everything out. And it may feel a little bit more intrusive for you during that period of time than it would, let's say, for somebody like myself that's been a mom for a while. So I think it is important to discuss how to really handle the questions that may be a bit uncomfortable for you or situations that might arise where people may insert themselves into things that 
you really want to try to be more in charge of in terms of when it comes to your baby. So one of the things I want to talk about, I'm going to go over three different things that you can do when those situations arise. So the first thing is that every mother and every baby is different. You will get a lot of feedback from very well-intentioned friends and family members who are going to have an opinion about everything that you do, right? And again, this is usually coming from a place of love. So it's not, you know, ill-intended in most cases, but it could still be uh, not solicited, right, advice. And as a new mom, it's going to happen a lot. First of all, it's just important to make the mindset shift that is not personally towards you. It just happens a lot to new moms. And I think a lot of it is well intended because people feel like you're new at this. I've been here before. Let me offer advice to you, which can be helpful. But there are certain things that you may have made up your mind about. Some people will offer their opinion about breastfeeding, whether or not they're in support of it or how hard it is or what kind of problems they had with it. And it could almost influence or put a filter over how you or how your experience is with it. And so when I talk today about how to put healthy boundaries in place, I'm speaking of these particular situations where that might arise. People have opinions about co-sleeping and sleep training and whether or not you're going to use a bottle or whether or not you're going to do formula versus all of the other options as well. So the first thing is to remember that every mother and baby is different. And so what their experience of their childbirth is does not necessarily mean that that will be your experience. And sometimes you may need to vocalize that if someone is being very persistent about how you should see about your baby. I believe at the end of the day, after you've gotten the childbirth classes and the lactation classes. You've done all of your research and all of your education. At the end of the day, a big portion of being a good mom is just being confident that you love the baby and you'll do what you need to do to take care of the baby. And so a lot of that is to really help you see about your child, right? And so what has worked for someone else may or may not work for you. And it's okay for you to feel confident in letting someone know I understand you've had a problem with breastfeeding, but this is something that is really important to me and I really want to provide this for my baby and move on. Pivot the conversation. There's no need to really have a long, drawn-out conversation or debate about your decision. It is your decision. And yes and no are full sentences. So just remember every baby and every mother is different and how you choose to care and nurture for your baby. You have the right to make a solid decision about that without the input of others' unsolicited opinions or advice. So that's important to understand. Hi, mama. Got an empty hospital bag? No birth plan? Or how about this? You want to make a birth plan, but don't know where to start? No problem. Today's episode is brought to you by Bump to Bundle Blueprint, an online program designed to help you create a stress-free birth blueprint in six weeks or less. Listen, if you think you need help preparing for your baby's arrival, you absolutely do. Check out our wildly popular free masterclass titled Three Mistakes First Time Moms Make When Preparing for Birth and What to Do Instead. This masterclass is chucked full of all kinds of valuable information like my three-step framework for creating a stress-free birth plan, the number one way to have a positive birth experience, and the secret to transitioning into motherhood like a boss. If you're pregnant and want to learn more about our proven method to help you prepare for your first hospital birth, click the link in the show notes. See you there. The second one is that you only really need to answer what you feel comfortable with sharing. 
I know that this happens a lot with women who are trying to conceive. People will, you get married, and if you're newly married, when you see friends or relatives, they start to ask you about whether or not you're going to have babies or you plan on having any kids. And initially, it's a very innocent question, and it may be very valid, but it just depends on where you are in the journey of trying to conceive. If it's not been a problem for you and that's not really a sensitive area, then a quick yes or no may be suffice. But for someone who may have struggled with becoming pregnant, it can be a sensitive topic to to delve into a whole explanation about where you are in trying to have kids. So just be mindful that regardless of what someone's intentions are when they are asking you, you only really are required to answer as much as you feel comfortable with sharing. So if it's a sensitive topic for you or if you just are someone that you don't want to have to discuss it, don't feel like you have to because you absolutely do not need to explain what your position is on any given topic. It could be, again, breastfeeding, or it could be potty training, or it could be whether or not you're going back to work. Whatever your decision is, you definitely need to be okay with that. And I think the real key is that once people see your resolve about something, in most cases, that will be a cue for them to then respect that decision and to move on to whatever else is the topic of discussion for that day. I think the problem normally comes when you're already unsure about some things and now sometimes that becomes an invitation for others to impart their opinion. And a lot of times you may not necessarily be looking for an opinion. And so it's just important that you only share what you're comfortable with people knowing and what you feel comfortable with sharing, period. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is it's going to be helpful if you consider that people are going to ask certain questions, right? So when I gave the example about trying to conceive, people are going to ask that. It is a high possibility. I'll put 100% that that someone is going to ask that. But it's a high possibility that people, after being with someone for a while, people will ask what your intentions are in terms of having kids. So knowing that that is very likely to happen, I think it's important to be prepared with a response that you feel comfortable with and a response that will keep you from feeling like you're a deer in headlights. So it's a common question. We know that people ask it. And I think in order to be able to stand in your power or to place a healthy boundary there, it's just to simply be prepared with certain questions that people may ask and then have a well thought out response to that question. So if you are talking about something like sleep training, someone might have an opinion about that. And you've decided either yes, you're going to or no, you're not going to. To, for whatever reason, if you think that that might be a question someone asks you and you don't necessarily feel like going into a deep conversation about it, then I suggest just having a very easy and quick response about your decision. And that's that and just move forward. But again, I think the power really comes from having a thought out response before the question is answered. So like if you're going to a mommy group or if you know you're going to be catching up with friends or let's say you're having dinner with family and you have a particular family member that is known to ask a lot of questions and really be involved in other people's business, then that is something you need to consider. And just be prepared for that. The worst feeling is feeling like a deer in headlights and not necessarily having a response. And then what you find yourself doing is steeping on it and thinking about it when everyone else has moved on. And you're thinking about it and the thought is lingering because you weren't prepared. And it's likely you didn't answer it the way that you wish you would have. And so now you're stuck with the afterthought of, I wish I would have said this, or why did she ask me that? And so anticipating that someone will ask you something in regards to certain topics like feeding, sleep training, co-sleeping, breastfeeding, all sorts of different things like that. And having a predetermined response is really going to be key to you 
really being in control of your boundaries and setting the proper boundaries so that you feel as though you are only sharing what you are comfortable with. So just as a quick recap, just remember that every mother and baby is different. And whatever your decision is for you and your baby is appropriate. It does not have to hinge on what someone else's experience is. You really have to weigh a lot of things to be able to see is it apples and apples or oranges and oranges so that you can know whether to apply what they are offering or maybe it does not apply to you. But it's important to understand that you are going to have your own journey and you are entitled to that. And it's important that you really protect that because according to someone else, what you are doing may not necessarily flow, but it's okay because it works for you. And so that's number one. Number two is only answer what you feel comfortable with sharing. And sometimes it can be difficult to not feel as if you owe someone an explanation, but you don't. (laughs) You really do not. And it's okay to place certain things with boundaries around them so that people understand you're okay to talk about certain things or you're okay to have certain input about certain topics, but other things are off, off limits because you know, it's your choice and your right for your baby. And then the third thing is just to consider some of those questions before you are asked. So before you go out or you have people over, you definitely want to consider some of the things that are important to you so that you know where you stand on it and how you plan to communicate that to others. Now, really quickly, I just want to also add about when you, this could really play a part, and this is important, so, you know, kind of tune into this. When you come home with a new baby, there's a ton of people that are excited to see the baby and to love the baby, and it's an exciting time. The reality is that you do have to be careful because of germs and because of your baby's immune system that is still, well, is very new and it hasn't been around long enough to have built up a good amount of antibodies that we likely carry because of our exposure, right? We've been around for a while. We've been exposed to different environments. So our immune system has a profile on how to fight off certain things. Your baby's immune system is quite new. And so it's important that you consider that and that you help other people to consider that as well, because I think sometimes they're just so excited to, again, welcome this new baby, that thinking about what issues it may cause is likely secondary, if at all. And so it's important that we take those things seriously and that we look out for the health of our baby by implementing very healthy boundaries with friends, family, and especially strangers. So if you know that you have a big family and a lot of people want to see the baby, you might want to consider exactly what that looks like and making sure that certain boundaries are in place and that everyone understands that um, because the thing you don't want to do is to be so lax about it that there are certain consequences that kind of come from that and the baby is exposed to different viruses and things like that. Their immune system is just so new that it is important if someone wants to hold the baby or is touching the baby hands and you might want to consider letting them know, hey, do you mind maybe touching their feet or their leg? And the reason why I say that is because babies are notorious for putting their hands in their mouth. And so if someone touches the baby's hand, right, and then it has germs and then the baby immediately puts their hand to their mouth, that is that's going to cause a problem that's going to introduce bacteria to to the baby. And so it's totally fine for you to speak up and for you to say that. Some people kind of know they don't like it, but they won't say anything. And I hope, if nothing else, from listening to this episode that you can appreciate the importance 
uh, being able to speak up and to feel validated in knowing that it is your right and that your baby is really depending on you to speak up, especially in that case. So I just wanted to make sure that those things were communicated because as a new mom, again, it's something that you don't really think about. You just find yourself in the middle of having a conversation with someone and feeling like I wasn't really prepared for that or having friends or family members to assert themselves in different ways or their opinions on you and your baby. And you can find it difficult at that time to to get your footing. But again, as I talked about before, having a thought out answer is going to really equip you to be able to make sure that you are communicating effectively when it comes to your boundaries for you and for your baby. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, happy birthing.